With springtime upon us, a lot of us are thinking about getting out, doing some camping, getting out into some remote areas and uh, off-grid locations, but we want to take a few of the modern conveniences with us. So thanks to Renergy for sponsoring this video. I want to show you a couple of the products that they sent me for test and review. And the first being this Renergy 200 watt 12 volt monocrystal foldable solar suitcase along with their 12 volt 100 amp hour Pro Smart Lithium Iron Phosphate battery. If you're in the market for one of these types of products, this is a great time to take advantage of the sales that Renogy is currently running through the month of April and maybe even beyond. This Renogy 200 watt foldable solar suitcase, you can save $150 currently on their sale here in the middle of April 2024. It comes with a 20 amp waterproof Voyager charge controller and it's one of the simplest plug and play kits that I've seen with very easy setup for mobile applications. And accompanied by their new product, which is the Renogy 12 volt 100 amp hour Pro Smart Lithium Iron Phosphate Battery, you can save 30% or $251 off your purchase of this particular item. The 100 amp hour Pro Smart Lithium Battery includes a self heating feature as well as Bluetooth. So in those colder temperatures, it will heat itself and allow you to be able to charge it in cold temperatures without damage to the battery, as well as Bluetooth monitoring. So that is all built into the BMS, all built into this battery, and there's no additional setup or items required. You just basically connect this to your system and you've got all those features automatically. It's all inside the battery. I will be including, as I normally do, links to these products in the description of this video along with any coupon codes that I may have available to you. If you're interested for more information or something I don't cover in the video, you can easily go to the Renogy website via that link and check out the products and get more detailed information. Now the setup of the 200 watt solar suitcase by Renogy is real simple. Unfold it, lift up these legs and adjust them to the height that you want or just a general height to begin with and you can adjust it once it's set up. Carry it out to wherever you need to set it up in the sun and set it down. Then you've got this 10 foot cord will connect to the battery. The Renogy Voyager 20 amp solar charge controller is also equipped with a backlit screen. And it's also capable of charging four different battery types. Sealed, gel, lithium, and flooded batteries. Second, let's look at the back of the uh, 200 watt solar suitcase. So we've got a cord that comes from the right hand solar panel connects to this junction box and then a cord that comes out with MC4 connectors on it, a positive and a negative, black and a red wire. And then that will connect to the solar charge controller. This is the Voyager 20 amp 12 or 24 volt charge controller. The uh, charge controller is on a hinges and then it velcros to the back. So when you've got this set up, it'll hang down so you can, you can view it and then you can tuck it back up underneath there. And all this is rated for uh, outdoor weather and it can be rained on, but you don't want it completely submerged. But a little bit of rain is, is not going to hurt these items. That's what they're designed for. When I received it, this solar panel was connected to the charge controller, which was interesting, I thought because you don't want your solar panels connected to the charge controller until you've got your battery connected. Now the 10 foot extension that connects to the battery with the alligator clips, that will connect to these two MC4 connectors. So all of this connects with MC4 connectors, which I actually personally really like. They have polarity set up so that you cannot hook this up incorrectly. You couldn't hook these two together or you couldn't hook these two together. So they have only, they're only going to go one way. I will connect up my 10 foot lead to the battery first. That will power on the charge controller. And then I'm going to uh, connect my solar panel to the charge controller. What you really just need to keep in mind is you don't ever want the charge controller with solar coming into it without a battery connected. So always connect your battery first and then come up here and connect your solar panel to the charge controller and you should be fine. All right, so for this 
test or review, I wanted to test the uh, low temperature cutoff on this lithium iron phosphate battery. So I've got it in this 12 volt cooler and it's cold. It is 33 degrees inside the cooler right now, but I just took the battery out of the freezer inside the house. So the battery is frozen. It was three or four degrees. I'll show you on the phone app where the battery is at the moment. So it's at five degrees Fahrenheit, <laughs> five and a half degrees on the battery. And I've got all the warnings showing, but I wanted to show this while I hook this battery up to the solar panel and then we'll see what it does and what it says. And then we should see in the middle of the screen there, the heater, which is currently off, should come on. Once the battery receives some type of charge power, whether it's plugged into a charger or in this case, it'll be the solar panel, the 200 watt solar suitcase, it should automatically, if it's four amps or greater coming in, it should turn on the uh, heater. And it's gonna use that heater to heat up the cells to the point where they can actually receive a charge and then we should see these warnings go away so let's connect the battery we've got make sure you get these right we've got positive over here and I want to lay these down because I'm going to close the refrigerator door for this experiment oh and here's a thermometer let's see if we can read that well, it's showing about 38 36, 38 degrees at the top of the battery in this cooler. We'll shut the cooler down the best that we can. And the reason I'm putting it in the cooler is just so it stays cold longer. We'll see how well those heaters go and see how long it takes to heat that battery up to where we can use it. The uh, charge controller did power up once we connected the battery. And I want to make sure I've got this on lithium ion. So let's go to battery. Lithium. It is a 12 volt battery. And we want it to charge. The default for a lithium ion is 14.2 volts. We'll go with that. That's fine. And then hold that down and go back out. All right. So it's currently at 12.3 volts. This is a 12 volt battery. Now we'll plug in the solar panel. Fourteen point three volts. Temperature is irrelevant. I don't have the probe temperature probe connected. Twenty two volts. one amp two amps so it's not putting much into the battery at the moment so let's look at the phone app and see what the battery is showing right now error eight these errors for the temperature i believe and it shows that the heating module status is on but there's presently no current going into the battery it's set at 12.8 volts at the moment on the battery voltage 105 amp hour it's at 61% or 61 61.98 amp hours and we're at 58.5%. And here's a look at the cells. 3.2 across the board for all four cells. So we'll see how long this takes. I'm going to time it. And we'll see how long it takes to come up to the point where we're, we're going to start charging. I believe this has to get above 32 degrees in order for the charging to uh, start taking place, but currently in the heating mode status. So I'm pretty consistently getting 21 and a half volts or so out of this uh, 200 watt solar suitcase. And the, uh, the rating on the panel, if you look at the open circuit voltage is 24.3, I believe what it says there or 20.4 volts for optimum operating voltage. So that's pretty darn good. So while I'm waiting on that battery to warm up to the point where it'll accept the charge, I'm thinking that's gonna happen around 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go over a couple of the key features of this uh, Renergy Smart Lithium Iron Phosphate Pro battery. So the uh, 
exceptional lifespan, more than 5,000 cycles to 80% depth of discharge. Can accept a continuous charge or discharge current of 100 amps. And it's also designed with a sturdy internal structure for RV use. So it's, a, it's designed to be bouncing up and down the highway in a vehicle or an RV. It has 60 protections, more than 60 protections, and alarms through the smart battery management system. Real-time monitoring through the DC Home app. Of course, the intelligent self-heating function for more stable performance, which we're currently working on at the moment. It has a self-control fuse that can effectively prevent battery overcurrent and over-voltage failures. And it's considered best in class for capacity and ease of expansion. Maximum capacity of more than 105 amps for longer lasting application. It supports up to eight batteries in parallel, delivering a maximum of 12.8 volts, 800 amp hours at 10.24 kilowatt hours. All right, here's a look at the solar charge controller, the Voyager 20 amp, we're getting 10 and a half amps. Into the uh, smart 100 amp hour Renogy Pro battery. Fourteen point five point seven volts, consistently around ten, ten and a half amps, coming off of this two hundred watt Renogy um, solar suitcase into the one hundred amp hour Renogy Smart Lithium Pro battery. Very good, fourteen point eight volts. 10, 10 and a half amps. So that's really good off of a 200 watt solar panel going into that 100 amp hour battery. So here's an interesting thing looking at the app again as we're getting 10 and a half amps showing on the charge controller. Part of that is actually being used to drive the uh, heat modules because the heat module is on and then we've got 6.7 amps are going into the battery. So about four amps or so, maybe a little more than that, it's uh, using to uh, run the heater modules. And then when those turn off here at about 50 degrees, we've got about six and a half degrees yet to go. When the heaters turn off, I'll bring you back and we'll look at it and see what we've got going into the battery, assuming that we still have the solar panels arranged in the sun as they currently are. So at one hour and 20 minutes, from the temperature that we started this test at, the heater is finally turned off. It's got the battery temperature up to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and it just shut off. I just didn't catch it on the screen capture. Now we're getting 8.6 amps into the battery from the uh, 200 watt solar suitcase with the Voyager charge controller. 3.4 volts, the cells are staying perfectly balanced. They've came up uh, 0.2 volts in that last hour and a half. And we're at 61.1%. I've got the solar suitcase set up with the battery. Just out here in my front yard just to show you where we're at at the moment. Currently at 15.1 volts in charge from the solar panel. 8.8 .8 amps going into the battery. Into the 100 amp hour Renogy Smart lithium ion battery. And uh, I want to test the waterproof capabilities. They say this charge controller is waterproof as well as I think it was IP67 on the battery. It's waterproof as well. So this is totally designed for outdoor use. And say you were off camping, you were camping and maybe you went hiking and you left this set up and a big rainstorm came in. I wanted to see how this will handle that. And this is gonna be excessive, but this is a test for the video. So let's check this out. I'm going to use my garden hose and simulate a rainstorm. <laughs> Probably worse than you would ever want to imagine. While it's connected. You can see on the app, it still appears to be unaffected by the rainstorm that it's currently encountering. I've seen people dunk these batteries into a, completely submerge the battery on some people's videos in a tub of water. But this is a realistic 
real world scenario setup, in my opinion. And that's what I'm wanting to simulate here. You left this sitting out by your campsite, you got a big rainstorm, maybe you're not able to get out there and unplug it just to see how it does. So that's a pretty good rainstorm. And as you can see, there's been no effect on the charge controller. It still seems to be operating. We're still 15.1 volts on the, on the solar, 8.8 .8 going into the battery. You can see that on the app as well. No change whatsoever. But I'm glad the rainstorm has stopped. <laughs> So what do I think about this setup? I think it's a very convenient, very ideal setup. I think if you get in on the sales they're having right now, you're gonna be pretty happy with this, especially for your like tent camping or car camping. In a scenario where you need a portable setup, you can just load this into the car or the RV, move on to the next spot. Not a whole lot to take with you. Now the panel is 35 pounds or so in its carrying bag, but it is quite thin. And if you got a place to store that, the battery is nothing. Battery is about 27 pounds, I think. That's pretty amazing for a 100 amp hour battery. And uh, pretty small dimensions as well. A lot smaller than a regular lead acid style battery. I'm totally happy with it. Hope it uh, helps somebody out out there with your decision. And if you decide to use those links I have in the description, those are affiliate links. I potentially would make some uh, commission on that if you happen to use those links. And I want to just to tell you in advance that I appreciate it if you choose to purchase off of those links. And any proceeds that I would make from that will go back into making these videos so you guys can see these products and see them tested out before you purchase them for yourself. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up or if it helped you in any way before you leave. And if you're interested in this solar off-grid DIY type projects, click the video on the screen now for another video I think you'll enjoy. And we'll see you there.